Well, g'day and welcome to a brand new episode of Muso Hub. It's been a while since we've been together, but uh, we decided to uh, get the show back on the road. And this is actually episode number 21, but it's the first of a new series of Muso Hub, which we're spending ideas, we're putting together ideas of uh, trying to get out to further put people further away from just uh, the local centre of Victoria area. So it's now opened up to anybody uh, Australia-wide, I suppose. Um, and so if you're watching this and you're uh, an artist or you know someone that you think should be on the show, um, at the end of the show we'll explain to you uh, how you could be a special guest on uh, Muso Hub. And uh, we've got a special guest this week which... Um, is waiting in the back room so let's hope he can uh, hear us and uh, our special guest this week is Mr Trevor Petrie. G'day Trev, how are you going? Good, how are you doing John? Yeah good thanks mate. Um, it's uh, really good to have you on and uh, it, you're very lucky to be the first uh, first guest on uh, on Muso Hub for the, uh, the new season. Um, so tell us, a, oh, that's good. tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, Trevor. Where, where are you located? What area? Yeah, uh, I've just moved back to Bendigo after a few years in Castle, Maine, where we're now uh, out in Strathfield, say. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I guess I'm, um, I'm a family man first, a musician second or third. Uh, got a day job in IT uh, and I've been... Um, playing around the truck since uh, probably the late 90s uh, mm -hmm. when I, I guess, seriously started playing in bands uh, yep. when I first moved to Bendigo. Uh, how young were you when you first noticed um, music and, uh, and where were you? I, I think I noticed music um, primarily through listening to records, um, most likely sitting on my dad's lap. Uh, in the lounge room at home from a very young age, probably um, sort of four, five, six, something like that. And I think that had a, a fairly profound effect on me, really. I can remember even in primary school uh, walking around singing parts of songs that uh, I didn't really know. I you know, wouldn't have known who the artists were, but uh, I, was, I was really into music. And, and when I... When I discovered uh, a guitar in a cupboard at home uh, that had apparently belonged to my dad who'd intended to, to learn, um, I was pretty keen to get lessons and that was about grade six. Started doing lessons and uh, I got the bug, I guess. Excellent. I sort yeah. of never looked back. <laughs> yeah, I can relate to that. Um, so from there, where did you, did you just... You, were you playing in a school band or something, or were you just um, working on your own, or did you um, did you you know form a form a band with a couple of friends or something like that? I I did very briefly uh, play with a, and this is in grade six. I I played with a, a friend of mine uh, who was learning drums, and I couldn't even tell you what we played, whether we were just bashing around or trying to learn songs or what. But I don't think that lasted very long. Um, but uh, look, I, I could uh, barely push down the strings on the acoustic at that stage. I, I think I was, I was very much still learning. So when I, when I got to high school, uh, that was when I started doing uh, lessons through a, a guitar shop. And uh, the owner sort of pushed a, a few of us together and tried to form a band. I, I guess he succeeded in, for, in forming a band and... Um, and everyone decided I should be the singer, so <laughs> that's, that's so kind of how it all happened. So you were thrown in the deep end. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't my idea of fun at the time either, but yeah. uh, but I've I've really learned to love it. So. Yeah. So you stuck and lyrics, with lyrics are my thing. Yeah. So you stuck with the with the vocals as well, and and the guitar. That's what you've stuck with all the way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think. Um, if anything, I've uh, concentrated more on, on songwriting and uh, lyrics and vocals. Uh, 
I don't think my, my guitar playing got all that much better after about year <laughs> nine. <laughs> so when you talk of songwriting, um, who would be your influences? Is you know any particular artist that you'd uh, in the vein of? Do you think, or or is just yourself? Quite, quite eclectic, really. Um, I guess uh, early on, Violent Femmes mm -hmm. uh, were a big influence, but. Uh, by the same token, um, Nirvana, Smashing Pumpkin, and a, a Smashing Pumpkins, and a whole lot of other uh, grunge bands had a, a, a really huge impact on my writing. Mm -hmm. um, maybe more so lyrically than uh, than anything. But um, so, how would you describe your style of, you know, you've got those influences, but I, I, are you that heavy or not really the the style that you play? I think almost every band I've been in has been quite uh, dynamic, uh, quite... I think we've really struggled to settle on on one genre. I describe what, what I do now as indie folk rock uh, because I think the, the folk side of things um, encompasses the, the songwriting and the, the lyrics, which are, you know, something I, I labour over, uh, I guess. Mm -hmm. um and you know I, I still i guess it's rock you know? yeah yeah and um so do you remember your first public gig or anything like that was that a nerve-wracking thing or where was it yeah it was at a, a cafe in kyneton I, I don't i know the building's still there but uh the the business has long since gone it was called the west end cafe i think that was about 1990 six or 1999 I'm not, I'm not quite sure now uh 31st of march i know that much but uh, i have got a cassette recording of it somewhere which i'm too scared to play <laughs> i don't want to hear it <laughs> <laughs> um that's great and um so what are you up to now what, what's you've moved for a few bands since then or is it more solo work or what are you actually up to at the minute yeah, so I guess antisocial commentary was a, a big thing. Uh, that was, you know, 2004 right through to 2013 uh, with a, a few different members here and there. Um, but uh, the whole time playing with um, Brian Hosking, uh, mm -hmm. who I've, I've been very good friends with uh, pretty much ever since we met in 2004. Um, I did a bit of a solo thing for a few years um, and played as a trio, I guess, uh, but I'm, I've moved back to a, a band situation now. So uh, we call ourselves the War of Ideas and we're a, a five-piece band, um, two guitars, guitar, bass, uh, sorry, two guitars, bass, drums and keys. Uh, and so my wife, Frida, she's playing keys and doing some backing vocals now. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's been a whole lot of fun. Great. And um, so are they all originals that you're playing or do you do some covers or or is it all originals and your stuff? Yeah, no, I've, I've pretty much always done my own stuff um, or uh, any band that I've been in uh, since probably around the, the early 2000s has been originals based. Mm -hmm. I've, um, I've always, I guess, uh, put my time into writing rather than, than learning other songs because I... I enjoy that more i guess mm -hmm. that's great uh thanks trev um we're probably just about to wind this up but uh it's been great to chat with you um overall what is the magic that you feel with music why why do you keep doing music what is there something special about it it's the the chills down the spine the reaction from the audience the uh the joy of um of just getting up there and being alive and living in the moment i think um uh, that keeps me doing it. and I can't not do it. I've, um, you know, I've, I've got a, um, I guess what you'd call a, a somewhat successful career in IT. I've, I've been at, um, been doing that for nearly 20 years. Um, but I can't, I can't stop doing the music. It's, uh, it's a big, big part of who I am and, and I really enjoy it. Okay. And, um, so for tips for other young people out there, um, What's, uh, or other people, not necessarily young, but anybody wants to get into music or is sort of waning a bit in their music, um, mm. in their playing, and is there any tips that you give people of, uh, you know, what, what to do to, to make it all happen and have that buzz that you have? 
Yeah, um, look, I'm, I am and have been a chronic overthinker my entire life. And I, I think the best advice I could get, give anyone is don't overthink it, just get out there and do it. Don't worry mm -hmm. about what other people are doing. Don't bother, worry about what other people uh, may or may not think about your music. Just get out there and play it. And if it connects with people, it'll connect with people. And if it doesn't, you'll, you'll still enjoy it. You'll still mm -hmm. keep doing it. Um, it's it's a long game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm finding that too. I thought uh, when I was uh, 30, that would be the end of playing. But uh, it's just something mm. that gets into you, isn't it? It just gets in there and you yeah, yeah. and you just you love it just as much, if not even more, as you get a bit older. Yeah, yeah. yeah just and, find that one thing you love doing and keep doing it. Doing it, yeah. So um, now, have you got an EP being launched yeah soon, so correct? the war of ideas we're we're launching uh an ep on the 4th of november at the vine which is part of the uh best of bendigo music book launch uh and uh starman dives are releasing their ep on the same night so uh it should be a pretty big night at the vine i reckon so Good way to was... launch an ep <laughs> so just that date again trev when is it yeah, Saturday the 4th of November. 4th of November at the Golden Vine. Excellent. Okay, Trev, thanks for being with us tonight as our first uh, special guest on the new series of Muso Hub. And Pleasure to be here, John. Thanks. No worries. And I uh, hope plenty of people come along and uh, check you out at the Vine. Well, that was Mr uh, Trevor Petrie, our first guest on Muso Hub TV for this new series. And if you'd like to get in contact with Trevor, you can contact him via email and it's trevor at poppetheadrecords.com.au. And speaking of guests, if you'd like to be a guest on Muso Hub, it's quite easy. Just go to our webpage, which is www.musohub.tv, and on the home page at the top there, you'll see a button that says Guest Request. Click on that, and uh, you can fill in the information, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And speaking of guests, next week our very special guest for the second episode of this new series is Mr Shan Lyons. Uh, Shan's coming in to tell us uh, his story and we're looking forward to that very much. And um, other ways you can get in contact with Muso Hub, um, our main email is info at musohub.tv and we're also on Facebook, uh, just do a search for Muso Hub TV on Facebook. And we have a musicians group on Facebook book as well, which is uh, the Muso Hub Musicians Group. So just search that and you too can share your story with other musicians. Um, that's about all we've got time for this week. And as usual, we finish off with some music. And Trevor uh, Petrie come in earlier in the week and recorded uh, a little bit of a song that he's written. And uh, it's quite a nice song too. Uh, although it's got a bit of a um, sad sort of feeling to it. It's called The Bitter End. So here's Trevor, and we'll catch you next time.
I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Now I rummage through all the nightmares I sell to you, searching for a shred of truth. And a piece of your heart And I can see it clear In my reflection in your tears I should have faced my fears For now fear is all I know Don't despair, my love It'll be all right It'll be all right Don't despair, my love I'm doing fine I'm doing fine I'm doing fine Take To mind, no peace to find anymore. Take me away from it all. There's no peace of mind, no peace to find anymore. Don't despair, my love It'll be all right It'll be all right Don't despair, my love I'm doing fine I'm doing fine I'm doing fine